So stroke is the leading cause of preventable disability in the Western world. In the US, there's about 800,000 strokes that happen every year, and it costs Medicare nearly $100 billion every single year. So it's a huge problem clinically and a huge problem financially. The whole of the Western world is the number one cause of preventable disability. Um, and in the developing world, it's a huge problem. But it's always in the top, I mean... It's always in the top three or four, absolutely, yes. Why apply artificial intelligence uh to strokes in particular. So when I came over to, 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 to Stanford, to California um, in 2014, it was a very interesting time. Early 2015, five randomized control trials were stopped early in the world of stroke. They proved we have a treatment for stroke if it's performed fast enough. Unfortunately, not many people were getting that treatment in time. The numbers were around five in every hundred patients are able to access that treatment in time. At the same time, in 2014, 2015, um, AI was developing in a very significant way in the form of deep learning. And what deep learning is really good at is recognizing patterns in complex data and categorizing that data into different categories. As doctors, what we do is we look at medical images and we recognize patterns in those, recognition, in those images and we categorize those medical images into a differential diagnosis. So it's the same thing. And so what we realized as a team were that we could potentially apply deep learning to medical images to trigger a much faster recognition of the condition of, of stroke and certain types of stroke in particular to improve the identification of these patients who need treatment and also the speed and efficiency of treatment. It's a software that is able to do it, but you have to gain that knowledge. So how do you gain that knowledge that the software can better detect a stroke? Deep learning works by training um, neural nets, and typically it's neural nets with statistical models in between the layers of neural nets, which learn every time you put data through it. And so what you typically will do is have an expert radiologist, for example, train the algorithm by inputting different images that the, the, um, the expert has categorized and labeled. And each time the algorithm sees it, it will learn and change a little bit until it gets to the point where it's as good as the, radi as the expert radiologist. Does it have the potential to be better? I think in theory, in time, you'll be able to train enough algorithms to certainly bring the, the average standard of um, interpretation up towards the very best. Um, whether it will surpass humans, it, there's a lot of um, intuition. Um, and clinical information that goes into making a diagnosis. So in order for it to surpass humans, it's going to have to take all those data points into account as well, not just the images. Tell me about the testing that's going on, and you have it concentrated in certain regions of the U.S. Yeah, so we're working with some of the leading stroke physicians in the world. The reason we're working with clinicians in the southeast of the U.S. is that's where the highest volumes of, of, of stroke are. It's actually known uh, colloquially as the stroke belt, you know, places like Georgia, Tennessee, um, North and South Carolina. You know, it's those places which have an interesting difference in geography compared to, say, uh, you know, San Francisco or New York, where you'll have one major center in a city, and then you'll have lots of spoke hospitals around um, that center where patients can come in. And often, the patient will need to be identified and transferred as fast as possible, what would take by road three hours, so it may well be by helicopter. The stroke belt uh, is a big reason, diet? There's a lot of um, fatty food down there, and that's one reason why you do get a high percentage, a higher percentage of strokes here uh, there than you do, say, in California. Do you expect to see your technology out on the market within a few years? Absolutely. So we are hoping to get our 510K clearance um, early next year, and we'll be working with the FDA to make sure that we're doing the right studies to validate exactly what, what our software does. I mean, we would like to help doctors detect 100% of, of strokes. We'll do our best to get this into all the large and small hospitals um, in the US next year. Your technology, uh, do you think it will make sense to use it in China? Absolutely. In China, um, the, there's a high um, percentage of undiagnosed that's high blood pressure. High blood pressure can lead to more bleeds than, than clots, for example, in, in terms of stroke. Um, and so you've got a slightly different population that you're dealing with, um, which obviously leads to a slightly different clinical care pathway. So 
yes, absolutely, we want to move to China in the future, but we need to understand exactly how the, the intricacies play out compared to the US and the UK.